What you're about to see is a demonstration of an icebreaker that contains critical thinking skills. We highly recommend if you do use icebreakers that you include as many skills as possible. Icebreakers are important because it gets students to know each other, it gets students to know the teacher much better, and it sets a positive classroom environment. So what we're gonna do over the next time together is we're going to look at what can you do specifically, physically, psychologically, language-based, that makes sure that you're establishing those important relationships of trust and rapport. We want to create a, a learning space, a classroom space, where students feel emotionally safe, physically safe, because that's the only way they're going to take the risks, right? You're asking them to do something, just like you. We're all uncomfortable when we're in a learning curve. And we're only going to take those important academic risks if we feel physically safe and emotionally safe. So the first thing we want to start with is we're going to uh, do an icebreaker. This is something you can do in your classrooms when you go back in. Um, and it's, it definitely fosters that trust and rapport we want among your students. So icebreakers are important, especially at the beginning of the school year. And we highly recommend that 20% of your time be mm -hmm. spent creating good relationships among students and between you and the student. And so 20% of the time you do things like icebreakers and some of the other activities we'll be teaching you. 80% of the time is spent on content. So we recommend at least for the first two weeks of school that these icebreakers and other activities that we show you be done uh, to foster this growth in terms of relationships. So as a first icebreaker, um, what we'd like you to do is this. We want you to pair up person A and person B. Person A will tell about themselves to person B for about 90 seconds. What I want you to do is to tell your partner why you are unique, why you are such a unique individual. And as person A is speaking, person B is listening, and in your mind, come up with a book title or a title of a film that you've seen, or you can make it up if you want, and that captures that uniqueness. You, help, you all have that? Okay. And then we'll ask you to reverse that, and then we'll debrief. I want you to know, though, but before we start, the way we think icebreakers should be chosen as an activity is that they contain some critical skills, some thinking skills, writing skills, listening skills, and there are lots of them that you can find if you can Google them, but just not just a fun game, but where they can think and they can write and they can organize their thoughts or evaluate. So could you please introduce your partner? What we'd like is, could you tell us his name? the book title or movie title that you've chosen, and the reasons why. Briefly, why did you, what made you come up with that title? Okay, so this is Samuel Jenkins, and the title I chose for him is For the Love of Music. For, for the, the Love, love of, music. of Music, very yes, nice. Great. absolutely, okay. because music has absolutely inspired his life. Um, he played the piano, he played the guitar, he played the violin, he's been in music bands, so. He is the music man. Beautiful, thank you. Uh, now Samuel, could you please introduce your partner? Yes, the title of her movie or book would be An Educator Abroad because she has had an incredible life of teaching all throughout the world in so many different countries and areas. Okay, beautiful, right, very beautiful, nice. thank you. So as Tony said before, 20% of your first couple of weeks of school, 20% of the time is spent building those relationships, getting to know your students, getting students to know one another. 80% is on content. That little five minute exercise, think about all the skills that were in there that you want your students to be able to do. There was the interpersonal. There was speaking and listening, one of the standards that you're responsible to get your kids to be able to do successfully. When we've done this even with kids as, as young as kindergartners, and what you have is you have kindergartners thinking at the synthesis level of Bloom's taxonomy. Because what, what were you doing? You were taking 90 seconds worth of dialogue and shrinking that down to a main idea, to a book title. So when we talk about icebreakers, it's not just let's go play Ring Around the Rosy. You know, it's, it, they need to have those critical thinking skills built in because what we know, what research tells us, 
is kids who can think critically are less behavioral problems in the classroom. And the whole idea that, and we've even done this, you know, with teachers and students at the, Sharon said, all the way down to kindergarten. The nice thing is if you were noticing the people that were up here, <clears throat> as one person was speaking about the uniqueness of another, big smiles on the, on the, the person that was being spoken about, which is really nice. So it increases the rapport. We've done this with teachers that knew each other for maybe 20 years, and they do this exercise, and all of a sudden, they go, wow, I never knew that you did this, you did that. And also in the classroom, the kids will say things like, wow, I didn't, you own a horse? That's unbelievable. So the more levels of, of uh, rapport that are developed. And connection. And, and connection, and knowing about each other, the better it is. But the, really the main thing is to develop those skills so they are th critical thinkers. And, and of, of course, at the end, they become less uh, in terms of problems for you in, in, in discipline. So that's the beauty of that exercise. So when you look for these things, these icebreakers, make sure some of those components are involved in it, okay?